Welcome to Business Live Extra, the show that focuses on business leaders and entrepreneurs. Ever heard of building with a purpose? Today, we feature a registered professional engineer affiliated with a company founded by his father, which has been focused on not only constructing buildings, but improving nationhood and lives. He's a registered professional engineer with over 15 years experience in local construction industry. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of West Indies, UAE, and an MBA from the University of Toronto. He's the first Vice President, VP of the Incorporated Master Builders Association of Jamaica, and a former council member of the Jamaica Institution of Engineers. He's a project manager and project engineer who believes in giving back through service. Our guest this week is Richard Mullins, Deputy Managing Director, MD of M&M Jamaica Limited, an almost three decade old civil engineering construction contracting company. Richard. Mark. Welcome to Business Live Extra. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. Yeah. yeah. You know, what's special about today is that M&M Jamaica, uh, you know, and, and yourself, Richard Mullins, you're our first, you know, construction development engineering company on Business Live Extra. Oh, that's great. Well, I think engineers really, by nature, we can at times be introverted or to ourselves very concerned about getting things right behind the scenes. But we should really make that effort to get out there and make the country, the nation understand what we're about and what we do for the country when everybody's not looking. Yeah. And how have you been able to grow, you know, the, the company, the, the enterprise into such a, a large entity today, you know, by being so uh, not, not, not big into marketing and sales like a lot of companies, you know, there's no mm. billboards, there's no massive marketing campaigns, you know, to your point about being an engineer. Mm. Well, the business that we do, construction is a, a results oriented business. Mm -hmm. It's nobody wants to give a second contract if you didn't finish that first contract correctly. Um, so what you find is the companies that persevere, the persons that uh, make a name for themselves are the ones that perform. Excellent. And you know, the name, how, how did you, how did the company come up with the name or, you know, your dad, the family mm. uh, come up with the name? Well, M and M Jamaica, well, it formed out of a previous partnership. Mm -hmm. um, and then we came, it became a family owned business in 1993. M&M Jamaica Limited, and since then it's been backed by the Mullings family directly. Okay, yeah. and is is it just your you know your dad and yourself, or are there other siblings that your dad had who was in the business originally? Yeah, well, my mom has had worked with us for many years. She's now moving through time, and and um, all okay. my many my three sisters have worked in and out of the business or are affiliated with the business, and I've had many other family members who've been in and out over the years. Okay. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, not to sound a bit cheesy, but the name, do you, uh, you know, when, when we're thinking about it, talking about it, of course, the chocolate company, you know, comes up. I mean, do you get that a lot in Jamaica or, you know, do you, do you, have you gotten that a lot in Kingston or St. Elizabeth or, you know, the, the roots <laughs> of the company? Uh, it's a joke we hear from time to time. I like to think that we're sweet and nice people, but the nature of the business, we're not always the sweetest people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but even like today, you know, 2020, the mm. persons, you know, call in at all or, you know, the last few years and, uh, you know, ever, you know, mix up the company at all with a, based on a company's legal name or? Oh, no, 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 just, just, for, just for kicks. Just for kicks. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's great. And about yourself, uh, mm. when did you get involved with M&M Jamaica Limited? Well, um, since I've been in high school, since I've been a young child, I mean, it's a family business. So, you know, as the business has grown, the family has really grown with it. Mm -hmm. So from summers working in summers from any emergency being on call to work with the company to um, gradu since graduation i've been working with the company with a short stint in um working in trinidad uh, and it's been the whole family has been in it in one way or wow. another you know growing up did you spend summers with the business as well as like christmas like did you work a lot as like summer jobs in the family yeah. business it we got we the whole family has really been into the summer in the summer yes like i think all my sisters and my niece and my nephew are all in it for the summer and um then that blossomed into more and more responsibility getting to know the business more of a time 
And what was, what was it like uh, growing up, you know, Sunday dinner or, you know, family outings, dinners? Is it largely speaking about business, you know, talking about business uh, with, with your dad and just the overall family? Yeah, I think that's probably the the other side of being in probably most family business. I'm not sure if I can speak for everybody, but um, if you look at my family, we have a lot of engineers. Okay. My dad's a civil engineer. My sister is a computer engineer. My niece just graduated. She's a software engineer. I have my cousin is actually just promoted from the chief engineer in, in the Florida Department of Transport. Congrats. So I have a, okay. a deep list of engineers. So it. I don't know how the rest of my family feels. I think they just, they're the non-engineers. They probably just put up with us. But yeah, um, yeah it's, it's non-stop. Uh, at so, home, at the beach, it's, all, it's work a lot of the time. So, you know, when you described it earlier about kind of maybe an introvert profession, does everybody just sit down there quietly? And, no, no. <laughs> or, or do you argue a bit about who's right and wrong? Or what's it, what's it like? Um, I think, you know, my father probably never lets it stray too far from going back to what we, what we have to do at work the next day. So we're always thinking, talking about, you know, where things are going, how the business impacts on us, what we think about work or what we think about how the, the work and the family um, mixes. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And, you, you know, I've, I've always heard engineers are the best problem solvers, mm -hmm. you know, so you should, you know, study engineering or study accounting, you know, one of these professions, mix mm -hmm. it with marketing. Mm -hmm. So what's it also like with, uh, you know, if you have problems, whether it's problems in, uh, you know, something that needs to be fixed in the house or something that needs to be fixed anywhere. Um, is that something where it's just like one, two, and it's just done, um, you know, with the skill sets that everybody has? I think what you'll find, I can imagine my poor mother and my poor wife watching this. Engineers sometimes will put aside a simple solution because they like to um, stretch their engineering muscles and look for the most <laughs> sometimes convoluted or complex solution just for fun, for fun which right. we sometimes do but um, yeah we definitely take uh, get a kick out of trying to fix everything around Makes the house sense. Yeah. yeah and do we have a lot of qualified engineers Richard in Jamaica I mean is it um, is it similar to other professions where there's maybe hundreds or thousands of engineers or is it very limited I don't know the exact numbers of engineers. Um, on a qualitative basis, we have very competent engineers in Jamaica. Um, mm -hmm. Schooled, well, in the Caribbean, you know, the University of West Indies was primarily our main, uh, in Trinidad was primarily the main engineering campus. Um, and many who've gone overseas to the US, England before in the, the older days and come right. back. So we have many, a deep bench of high quality engineers, probably, how I look at it is, unfortunately, a lot of the engineers also migrate from mm -hmm. greener pastures. You can't blame them. But um, it would be great to have a continuously thriving um, industry that keeps as much of them as possible in the country, um, giving back to the country. Like the, the program you're alluding to, like the way, where you get bonded and then come back and work with like a, maybe a large conglomerate or a large company. And, and they would take care of the, you know, the fees or the, the, the cost. Yeah, that's possible. But you got to have the work for them. You have to mm -hmm. have good, meaning, credible work for young engineers to develop, which is a big part of, you know, how we see the industry growing. Right. And I guess yeah. with the bauxite industry, yeah. under pressure or strain for the last couple of years, you don't have that, yeah, uh, that the, sector where, where a lot of engineers would go to. Exactly. The bauxite was, is really or was really a strong driver for developing and growing engineers. Um, mm -hmm. Even my father, before he um, did his degree, he had done work. I think it was Revere, it was the old okay. bauxite companies back then. And you know, it helped train and put a lot of technical people into our systems to keep mm -hmm. the country growing. Right. Um, much like if you'd look at Trinidad and their oil and gas and what that does for, mm -hmm. for their private businesses. Business. Yeah. yeah. And, and how did you now become that engineer? Was it mentorship from your dad was there a lot of family pressure you know we need richard to you know <laughs> become this engineer was it passed on or did you also just get passionate about it um all of the above actually um definitely a strong influence from the family my father um but there's something to say about to be said about role models in terms of growing up seeing my father seeing my older cousin um as very strong engineers, very diligent, very serious, and at the same time respected in their fields for what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, that has obviously impression on a, a has a, a good impression 
are a strong impression on a, a young growing a young man growing up right so that had a lot to do with it um and you you know so you're growing and you have you start to build your own expectations of how you want to to meet that level and you hope one day to exceed that level mm -hmm. so yeah and and how how much family is in the business whether it's you know siblings or cousins as well uh you know how, how much family is is in m m well at the moment um the the key family members, really, my father, myself, my sisters have been in and out and are kind of on their own career path. My nephew is now uh, working in the equipment side of it at times on his summer holidays, too. Uh, but mainly me and my father now, and I have cousins and so who pass through. And You tend to own some of your own equipment on your balance sheet or, or do you lease? Yeah, we own on the balance sheet. Um, that's a good question. You go to other jurisdictions in the U.S., Construction companies don't necessarily, or many of them don't own equipment, strictly a lease business. But I guess, you know, it would be nice to see maybe if that grows here in Jamaica and we can look at that as an off balance sheet item. But for now, it's on and it comes with a lot of overheads trying to keep the equipment running and mm -hmm. so forth. But um, as a cost factor, uh, for now, most of us keep it on balance sheet. Right. Yeah. So your, your early days, you know, mm -hmm. you went to Campion College. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that like as a, as a high school for you? Um, formative, it's very good academic school. Um, and the friends there who are, I keep, some of my friends are who I keep in contact to, up to today, you know, very successful. You, so you're with a set of students who are always trying to outdo each other mm -hmm. and, um, in right now make a name for themselves and so on. So it's been, it had a great impression on me. And it, when I look back at some of the teachers I had there and what they've put out, Mm -hmm. And what they've done for probably just this country by training those those students, I'm really happy mm -hmm. for that experience. And uh, did you do any sports as well? I mean, while you were there, or you, or mostly academia? I'm a horrible sports person. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Okay. Uh, I'll watch sports. I will not follow any sport. It's too mm -hmm. much. Um, too much emotion. <laughs> right. Any anything that's you know life changing? Any big takeaways you had from your you know from Campion that you know you feel really you know has made uh, Mr. Mullins into who he is today? Um. It sounds very engineering, very nerdy. It's, it's um, mathematics. Okay. We, did, we had a very good mathematics teacher going into sixth form. And I think just that challenge, when they threw that, that constant challenge of how do you do these things so quickly? How do you compete with these people right beside you to try and keep yourself in the top? That really made me think about, you know, performing and challenging myself. When, and when you go into engineering, you suddenly see the, how the beauty of the math. You got a one in CXC math? I would have to. <laughs> <laughs> you had to do like physics as well too, yeah. you know, standard you know, yeah, build up physics, to it. Yeah. Okay. A level CXC, the, the works. All right, yeah. great. Oh, that's great. And uh, you know, after that, what, what did you jump into? Where did you go for university? Um, like, uh, UE, University of West Indies in Trinidad. Um, and it was great. Actually, that was a very good experience in terms of living in Trinidad on Hall. Um, breaking away from the comfort zone of the, the maybe you could call it the campion bubble and being with um, people who I have a close relationship today. My brother's from uh, mm -hmm. Canada Hall. Right. And a, a, a very good impression on me. Yes. Uh, okay. And living in Trinidad was fun while it lasts. We're going to get back to that <laughs> on, your, on your carnival days. And we take our first break on Business Live Extra. We're speaking with Mr. Richard Mullins, Deputy Managing Director of M&M Jamaica Limited. We'll hear more about Mr. Mullins, his interests and company, which he leads with his father, Donald, when we return. Welcome back to Business Live Extra. We're talking to Mr. Richard Mullins, Deputy Managing Director of M&M Jamaica Limited. The company was established in 1993 and has gained the reputation of one of Jamaica's premier engineering, construction, and project management entities. M&M Jamaica prides itself on completing projects that enhance the environment and infrastructure. Their expertise is in building and civil engineering, project management, and construction services. M&M Jamaica has been associated with the Tom Redcomb Improvement Project in the late 1990s, Emancipation Park, the Portmore Town Center, 
and Northern Jamaica development projects in the early 2000s, as well as several housing and school building programs. Let's find out more. Richard, great to be back. Oh, good. Yeah. So, you know, we were talking about uh, your UE Trinidad days. Why, why, not, UE, why not UE Jamaica? Um, at the time, the, the, the main engineering campus uh, is in St. Augustine, Trinidad. Um, recently, they're, they're promoting or they're growing the, the local campus in Mona here, which is, will be good for the industry here. And has that changed now? I mean, if you wanted to study engineering, can you do it in Jamaica? Yeah, yeah you, yes, can, you can now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're even moving now where we're, we have, we're hiring um, or we're training engineers from who are studying at that campus. Okay, um, right here in Jamaica. Yeah, yeah I'm one Okay, terrific. And you, you did do some work in Trinidad or a stint. Um, for a very or, short time, I was in Trinidad. Yeah. yeah. For a very short time, I was in Trinidad working um, with an engineering design firm. Uh, in Dry with a, a lot of my classmates are still down there or were down there with me at the time. So we okay. got, you know. And what was that like as a Jamaican? It was, it was great, actually. I had a good time working. Mm -hmm. Not too much partying and um, getting to understand, you know, another country, another Caribbean country, how they operate different but similar to us at times. So okay. it was a good experience. And I mean, did you get caught up in the whole carnival fever and hype, um, go through some nice, you know, early partying years of your life? Was, sure I, I had a fun. I had some fun, not too much fun. Okay. But you have good fun memories of Trinidad. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And um, yeah, my classmates from there we we do look back on it pretty fun it was great okay yeah and was education more important to your dad or your mom or equally important for for you like both my my mother uh is a teacher or was you know was a retired teacher um mm -hmm. and my father is of course a very you know serious engineer or serious about his engineering so both that uh, you know that has a or has had a strong influence on i think all of my siblings up yeah. to now yeah. And and the MBA that you did at a very young age, um, you know, are you are you very happy with it that you did it? You know, do you think you should have gotten some experience before you did the MBA, or you, you're happy that you kind of did it, got it out the way, and then came back right. to Jamaica? Well, no, the MBA was great. I did it after working for or less than maybe five, ten years. Okay. So I did it after working some time, mm -hmm. and then I went and I got. It was it was a good grounding in business principles, um, in the underlying business principles, and helped me to also see from a, a first world perspective other ideas, options for how we can grow the business, how we can monitor what systems we can think about bringing back to our business. Mm -hmm. So it was good overall. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes persons say that the the MBA is about you know the network and. Uh, you know, the, I guess the group think and the connections you make. I mean, have you maintained or, you know, did you make some great relationships while yeah. you're in Toronto? Yeah, the network is definitely important. I did make uh, good relationships, actually very close friends, um, um, networking with people who are in in the industry, but based in Canada. Um, so that was actually very helpful. So I, can, I do up to today bounce ideas off them yeah, and okay. they, they give me a lot of ideas about, you know, where their industry grows goes and the different the, the little differences between you know regions this has been good you find anybody is in similar businesses to you globally or or everybody's in d different types of businesses explain like is anybody in engineering businesses yeah, that, in, that did the mba program with you yeah, yeah they were in engineering construction engineering contracting but maybe um one of my close friends Whoa. is it's a uh, electrical engineering contracting but still in the industry so it was an mba business management but with a focus so there was a lot of engineers in the program no not a lot there were a lot of engineers but still in the industry not much still in the industry when i went there okay yeah all right but it was very That's good to, to, to network and bounce ideas off so, them so tell us about M&M &M now, you know, mm. um, you speak about a lot about engineering, mm. but you know, if you drive around Jamaica, sometimes, you know, you see the asphalt rollers, you see the M&M &M brand, mm. you see it, you know, all over, uh, whether it's Kingston, different parishes uh, when you're driving. So, so what does, uh, you know, M&M &M really do? Uh, is it, is it mostly engineering and, you know, delegating, executing, or is it, tell us about the construction side, um, you know, how do you kind of put it together or explain it? All right. Engineering contracting, um, we bid uh, from step one. We, the clients, like mainly 
large private companies or large government institutions like the Water Commission, the Works Agency, the Housing Trust, when they want to execute their projects and they put them to tender, um, engineering contractors respond, they put together a bid showing that they're competent, mm -hmm. able to do the work and the price, the competitive price at which they're, they're willing to do the work. Um, and then they'll hire some, you know, different contractors are made up differently. Some will take the work as a, you could call like a management system and they subcontract many of the works. We tend to do self-perform a lot of the work. So we have a very strong technical team with engineers, project managers, equipment operators, and we go there in a close relationship with tradespersons, so masons, steel fixers, and so on. And we coordinate all of that at the various projects, um, finance it, and keep it going. Yeah. So, so you provide really A to Z, the, yeah. the whole yeah. gamut. Pretty intense, yeah. yeah. In, in the early days of Donald or m, &M did the company in the 90s and so forth, was it always like that or did you provide, you know, uh, a, a kind of part of that, you know, what you just explained? Yeah. And then you have expanded kind of nicely over the past yeah. 20, 30 years. In the earlier days, we were very infrastructure focused. So the, a lot of roads, pipelines, um, farm roads, bridges. Okay. And then over the years, we've branched off and done a lot more structures, housing schemes, um, big buildings, and so Maybe. on. Okay. Yeah. Like structural works. Structural works. Yeah. Okay. When we've in the past, we've done a lot. We had done a lot in the past for the working in the bauxite, mm -hmm. different aspects of bauxite. Okay. Yeah. How how big is the company today? How many how many team members? We are combined like over a hundred in terms of permanent technical staff, administrative, equipment operators, on, staff, on contract, and so on. So around 100 plus, and okay. then you'll have hundreds more that we manage out on the sites okay. that are hired for the projects. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such a you know, unique business or unique service, but how many engineers roughly in a company like this that make up the, you know, the 100? It varies according to the, how much projects you're doing. So in a okay. peak, when you're doing a lot of projects, you may have out there let's say 10, 15 engineers spread across different projects. Okay. Yeah. And what's the, what's the life of an engineer like? Uh, are you brainstorming and then delegating or is an engineer, you know, very hands-on, goes and gets the execution done, you know, you know with the workmen or the workers, mm. you know, because sometimes there's some misconception out there. Yeah. What's, what's an engineer's day like? If you're an engineer in a construction company, specifically in construction, you're, <laughs> you do also, you should really be part of that A to Z because the engineer tends to be um, higher in the, the, the hierarchy, tends to be up in the hierarchy of the construction company to ensure that they deliver whatever it is supposed to be delivered. Mm -hmm. So you, you not only have to be there looking at non-engineering stuff, such as you know, understanding the cash flow, your project won't run without that cash flow, but you have to be there on that side, making sure that nail is driven right where it should be. Because you're the engineer, your name is on that project um, from the management side. And part of your reputation should be that that project is delivered uh, without a hitch. So the, re the reputation is paramount. Yeah. Yeah. As you said earlier, the only way to get the next project, you got to get this first one done properly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And even you got to get it done properly. And even, you know, it's not a perfect world. Even when things go wrong, you, it, you have to be known as the company that will fix it. That will, whatever goes wrong, you'll make it right. Yeah. Yeah. What, what happens if you have like an overrun? Is it, is, is it sometimes, is it like government, you can do a supplementary budget or do you have to kind of go back and split it 50-50? It depends what you call an overrun. If the client changes things, if they change the design, if they add things, new things, if they didn't include something mm -hmm. and they want it now, then you know, they'll have to pay for it standard and you know they'll usually negotiate to try to get the best price and you deliver it if you the contractor overrun on your own account um you got to figure that out at home okay yeah okay. and does m, &M does, does the business have a board of directors now um, or is it mostly family at this stage right now it's mostly family now that we're going to move into a generational transition you know management succession we probably will go towards a, a formal or a semi-formal board structure where more likely um, my father will move into a chairman position. Chair, okay. Yeah. And, and how, how has that kind of been, you know, the succession planning and the relationship between 
you know, you and your dad and, you know, the siblings in the business? I can't um, undervalue the amount of guidance that I've received um, from my father and the, the input from our from the family in terms of where we're going and how we're going to structure it going forward. Um, so I think it's going well. The succession plan has been in place for, you know, a good couple of years now. And yes. I've been, um, I would say the, the only difficulty there is me. It's a, it's a, a lot to take on. But slowly and surely, um, we're growing into it. And then part of that succession plan is also making sure we have the, the outside managers are more and more involved in the business and are able to take up more slack and to move towards managing more independent, independently. That's, but that's obviously, you know, that's a process. All right, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. We're talking to Mr. Richard Mullins. More after this break. <music> We're back to Business Live Extra. We're talking to Mr. Richard Mullins, Deputy Managing Director, m and Jamaica Limited. m and Jamaica Limited prides itself on being a game-changing company with huge investments in the Jamaican people. The company credits its longevity to a commitment to leaving a legacy for future generations. m and Jamaica operates on the basis that true success is found both on the balance sheet and in the character of the business. The company says over the years, it has built a reputation for quality, dependability, and cost efficiency. We continue our conversation with Mr. Richard Mullins. Richard, welcome back. Oh, thanks. So are, are you at the stage now where you're Mr. Mullins in the business or are you Richard <laughs> or how are you referred to in the company on a day-to-day -day uh, basis? A mix of both. A mix of both. Um, I try not to overdo it, but I guess my nature is I can be a bit serious at that. Because you're an engineer. Yeah, I think that that that's really it. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there you know is there a softer side to you? Is there a fun side to you? Uh, a jokey side to you as oh, well? Oh yeah, of course. At home, I uh, I guess I'm two persons. At home, I'm actually a really relaxed, laid back person. But the the nature of the work means I have to be a, a completely different person at work. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we mentioned it earlier, but what is, what would you say is M&M's marquee projects? You know, you're going for a tender, a bid, or, you know, you're talking to your business. What, what, what really jumps out as, you know, big project for M&M Jamaica? Well, the, the, the thing about construction projects, the real, the, the, the best projects are the ones the, the average person doesn't even notice. You seamlessly drive on a new road, you suddenly you turn on a faucet, you don't notice that all your pipes have been changed and that you're, you're running on the change out those 60 year old water commission pipes and you have brand new pipes. Uh, so you won't notice it. But and those tend to be some of our hardest, uh, more difficult projects. So when I look back in the past, uh, like Emancipation Park, that was uh, we put in 24 seven shifts to get that delivered for Emancipation Day, the first the, the initial opening. Yes. And that was a lot of mm -hmm. fun. Uh, I think I was still in. Um, university at the time when I was here in the summer working day and night with the, the family out there trying to get it ready and open. Um, so, so, so sticking to that one, you know, as, as Jamaicans, you know, when we go there and we go jogging or walking, exercising, our families go there. Mm. What, what would Eminem have done there? I mean, you know, we see kind of the, we see the interlocking bricks or we see the landscaping, we see the whole thing, but, but break that down to us. What, what did Eminem actually, you know, do there? Cause we only see the end results. Okay. Well, you know, as a contractor, you're coordinating, so you're getting the material delivered, building the. I remember even building that drag, the jogging track itself, building the. So you'd have you'd have installed a jogging track as well. Yeah, the, the first. Ring. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, building the the earthwork, so scraping off all that land, putting down marl where necessary or topsoil where necessary, um, working with the landscapers, working with the 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 masons for the building mm -hmm. the the wall, working with the. Um, fabricators when they're helping them to put in the the security mm -hmm. fencing and, and the, the even the the water feature at the front yes we had done a lot of work trying to get that 
perfectly level mm -hmm. so the water would flow away. It's amazing. So it's a whole gamut. I mean, you're, yeah. you're like a widget factory, you know, raw materials, yeah. work in progress, and then boom, what we see is just a finished product now. Yeah, construction, a lot of people do describe construction like a new factory every project. You're, you're okay. making a new product with each project and trying to learn it all from scratch each time. Okay, so we have Emancipation Park. Mm -hmm. What kind of jumps out next? What's a, another, you know, big M&M, &M, you know, win? Um, projects like, we recently just finished the European Union, just um, funded the rebuilding of neonatal maternal units at um, four hospitals, St. Anne's Bay, Spanish okay. Town, Bustamante, and Victoria Jubilee. So these are good things happening. Yeah, and it was you know a very complex where the European Union has very strict guidelines and it's very complex working with them. Um, so you know it was a good experience getting the team together, making sure we can complete, can meet their requirements to get it done. So you, so, so you can take on specialist jobs as well. Yeah. I mean, if, if it involves, you know, contracting, engineering, but, but it can be specialist. Yeah. The okay. nature, the, that's part of the interesting nature of being in an island. Um, and when you need something, you, you have that option. Are you going to call somebody from overseas to do it from, do it for twice the price? Or do you have that capacity here that people can adjust, can adapt? to get it done within a reasonable price mm -hmm. range. Is, is there a passion also coming from, you know, your dad and your family about, you know, building Jamaica and really, you know, using Jamaicans and, you know, keeping the money here? Yeah, my, my dad, <laughs> that is definitely part of his constant refrain. How, um, where we can, how are we growing our people to do it here? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's a, a important part to getting knowledge transfer from overseas. So. You know, we're not against people coming from overseas competing and showing us how it's done. But um, if we believe in the country, we must believe that there are people here who can grow and learn and do things on their own, like an independent country. Okay. Yeah. And any other big projects or when you take on some of these projects, like say the hospital you mentioned, mm -hmm. do you have to involve somebody like a specialist? I mean, even if you outsource it who is involved in medical practice oh yeah I'll to, sorry. to come on yeah so we would be involved with other specialist installers who would do for example coming in to put in the um the gas line the medical gas line we'd have uh we had a technical consultant who helped us uh in coordinating the overall project plans and so on and we'd bring on outside managers at time to work with us and and get it all done mm -hmm. yeah and and where you mentioned you know pipes or sewage you know mm -hmm. there always seems to be these you know, media releases or articles about, you know, problems that housing developments have with sewage or just pipes or things of that nature that need to be fixed. Um, you know, how tough is it really, you know, doing these these sewage parts, which, you know, as you said, we, we don't really see. Yeah, you, they are extremely difficult. And um, that is also, I would mention, that's probably another one of our most, one, some of our most rewarding projects when we look at, um, you maybe wouldn't have known, like at Marcus Garvey Drive, when they were redoing the road, we redid the old sewer line down there. It's a live sewer, active raw sewage flowing through that line, and we're replacing the, the sewer lines live. Okay. Um, deep down 15, sometimes even 20 feet down in the ground with um, trench protection, having to send guys in protective suits down into active manholes to, to get them plugged. To get them. Okay. Yeah, so it's just very fun. for on a technical side on a challenging uh, for the challenge but it's you know it's risky and we have to be very conscious of uh, safety and safety. our workers in, at the time and and m, m is doing a lot of its work in the daytime or is it in the nighttime or you know how does your how does the work day look or is it 24 hours well it depends on the project of course um so projects where you're impacting the traffic and you need to try and keep everything keep everybody keep the country from coming to a standstill, you'll be working maybe sometimes day, night, 20, you know, 24 seven shifts. Mm -hmm. If you remember when there was the, the failure of the sewer line at Constant Spring mm -hmm. Road a couple of years ago, not the, the main project now, there was a failure of an old line there mm -hmm. and they had to shut down that section. Mm -hmm. So we were there 24 seven working to get it done um, to release it within the one week time frame. It okay, was, was, so, so sometimes you, you can get emergency calls or last minute calls that we need m m support on this urgently yeah yeah and we we definitely do look um, like the our big major clients like the water commission and the, the works agency we really have to look out for them in terms of you know their difficulties just 
transfer to the whole country. So, you know, we have to really look to say, how can we make it happen when they need us? So it's a true, it's really a true public private partnership. Yeah, it, it has to be. It really That's has right. to be. Yeah. Okay. And do you, do you actually, as such a unique business, do you have to have someone internally who really focuses on like these, these relationships you find? I mean, that is really us at the, the senior level, senior trying level. to talk to them, trying to find out, you know, what's going right, what's going wrong, wrong. and how can we solve it? How can we make things better the next time around? And so, mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's, that's excellent. And what do you find is uh, the hardest part on some of these um, projects? You know, is it, the, is it delivering on time? Is it the, you know, bill of quantities? Or what is really the hardest part about uh, doing, doing some of the projects? It varies from project to project. Um, if I had to pick something difficult, it's probably just the human side. We, it, just to get everybody focused on target and uh, in keeping with the vision, in keeping with seeing that it's not just uh, about this sacrifice today. Mm -hmm. When the company puts its name on a project, um, you're going, you're going to see that for years, 10, 15, 20 years. Yes. You're going to know you, you, you're the person who installed that. And you're going to need to have that pride today, today. to make today. sure that you can be proud of it in the future yeah. by, by doing it to the best, the best possible. And, and, and Richard, with Eminem doing you know, A to Z, what is really the bread and butter, if you can say? Like, what's the, what's the biggest concentration of revenue or what's your bread and butter business? Um, for us, it's a very interesting question. Uh, it varies because um, we have done a lot of, for example, housing projects for the National Housing Trust. Mm -hmm. And you would look maybe a year ago and we'd have been doing a project at Colbeck, Old Harbor, and that would be, you know, one plus billion size and project. These, and these are where, you know, Eminem is a, is a general contractor. General contractor working for NHG as a, the developer, developing the, the infrastructure layout. Um, and, you know, those would be, you know, one billion plus projects. But now, um, all of a sudden, we're going to jump into a, a three billion plus project for the Water Commission along Spanish Town Road. Okay. So, you know. So it varies. It, it's really, you know, again, we're on an island. It's what the, the country needs. And we're going, we have to adapt. So it can change year to year. It depends on the, on the requirements. Yeah, but, but mainly you'd find housing nowadays. I mean, you know, there's a person they call the builder and he was trying to get a lot of houses done. So we've been doing our part in that. And then the, um, the you know, we've had issues. The country has old pipes. The, the you know, Poor Water Commission has 50, 60 year old pipes in the ground. And they're trying to do their part to try to change those and, out. And at m, m you want to build? Yeah, definitely. All right. So it suits you. Yeah. That's good. All right. We're going to take another break on Business Live Extra. We'll talk about the state of the construction sector in Jamaica when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back to Business Live Extra. We're in our final segment and we've been talking with Mr. Richard Mullins, Deputy Managing Director of M&M Jamaica Limited. Between 2003 and 2008, the construction sector represented 8% of GDP. Like most other sectors, the construction industry has seen lower levels of output due to the impact of the global pandemic. According to Satin, the sector declined by 14.5% in the second quarter of 2020 when compared with the same period last year. The state of the construction sector is usually a good indicator of the economic recovery. Governments have usually turned to the sector to boost economic activities and create jobs. But what's the real state of play at this time, especially as Jamaica remains in recovery mode? Let's go back to Mr. Richard Mullins. Richard, welcome back. How, how important do you see the construction sector? I mean, besides, you know, we always hear Jamaica got to get the construction sector going. Mm -hmm. It's critical. You know, it's especially it's what hires, you know, everybody. But but how important do you see it to to the country? Mm -hmm. I see or if you know, people like myself in the industry see a side that maybe not everyone else is privy to. And that is not only as a engineer growth, uh, employment and so on but there's a a development aspect that many people won't be aware of when a construction company especially an organized and disciplined company goes into a community 
we take people who can't apply to your financial company for a job. They can't apply, they have difficulty in that formal sector. We take them, we give them honest tax paying work. And uh, a lot of the times people from those communities then tag along. We, we find people who work well, we'll take time and train them and they'll grow into um, breadwinning pe people who are breadwinners for their mm -hmm. family over time and develop into uh, Right, because I've always heard that what's different with a construction site is that it's not like you have to show up with a resume that morning. No. <laughs> but but so it, it provides a very important, mm -hmm. you know, employment opportunity. So probably th is it thousands? Is it tens of thousands of Jamaicans? Or, you know, you have any rough idea where you think, you know, how many persons directly, indirectly you think construction is oh, employing? In this country? Well, I wouldn't want to give you a wrong, uh, incorrect statistic, but um, definitely in the thousands, definitely thousands of people okay. regularly um, sharing up, you know, the large plan, cutting it out into many small pieces and allowing that this ma the masons from this community, the tilers from that community to mm -hmm. break out and to bring home um, an income for this part of the year. Yeah. And, and with that said, do you see M&M transitioning you know into doing more developer work not just gc work we do we have done small developments in the past and we're definitely growing our development arm we we do have like a you could call it the medium-sized commercial development um on the books coming up okay so it's we're definitely keen to do it um probably we just get we probably love the challenge of the construction too much uh, yes. but over time we will definitely grow that part, that aspect and uh, i mean are, are you bullish on uh, commercial versus residential or is this any, any opinion on how you see the market probably won't comment too much just to say they we do have what seems like a lot of apartments now um but i haven't done any detailed analysis but okay it'll be interesting to see um between how the economy is doing and the the, the quantity the supply side you know what's gonna happen but i you know i'm still optimistic that will come out of the, you know, the Corona induced depression and, and come back up and come back out from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I, you know, I, an observation, I remember when, when I came back in around 2000 and, you know, four or so, you know, around Kingston, you'd probably see about five, seven developments. And now it just seems, I don't know the exact number, but it just seems we have about 30, 35, 40, maybe residential developments. So it has, it could be a very good sign for the mm. economy, um, but at the same time, that's a skyrocket of you know construction developments yeah well you know the nature of real estate um you always have to be careful that you don't get too bubbly and that it's managed and um you know we're not the only country to have that issue where you're trying to balance not oversupplying not undersupplying yeah right but you know we do we definitely there's a deficit in affordable homes for the average jamaican out there but you know and that but that's always a kind of policy perspective. Mm -hmm. and, and on a general contractor side, do you find it difficult at times to manage the fixed price contracts uh, when you allude to like challenges or, you know, is, is, is that really the bread and butter and you find that you do a, do a really good job at that? Um, it really varies on the nature of, con of construction contracting. It varies. It depends on how well the client has put together their project mm -hmm. because a well put together project is is good not just for the client good for the contractor you get you you can run it you know smoothly when it's not so well put together and you you know that's where that's actually where you get the advantage of having a good contractor so we can throw our technical support to try and help you help the client figure it out and get things done um, better um, and when you're saying that you mean all the information you know give you the, the design the details just give you as much info as possible one time right the full right. detail specification up front but it's very you know it's, that's easy to to say but when you get into really complex projects then especially if you're dealing with existing services like for example pipes on the ground things change things are hard to yeah. predict and you're not sure if the person 20 years ago had documented it properly right. yeah. and and richard where Five years from now, 10 years from now, or even where does Richard want to take m, &M to? Um, well, in the, the really short term, we're definitely focused building out those systems, making it into a smooth running machine so that we can take advantage of um, the bigger, larger projects the, that the government will probably need to be done. And mm -hmm. who knows, maybe in the 10, the decade plus view, we can be looking at how us along with 
other Jamaican contractors should be out there in the, the, the rest of the region doing these projects. That's right. Yeah. I, are you anywhere else in the Caribbean now? No, or? but there are, there are other Jamaican contractors out there. Um, and I think it's a very good sign to see us mm -hmm. branching out. And I think um, the relationship we have among the industry, that's why it's good to probably, as we continue to foster that relationship, you, you should see more of us trying to make that push out there in okay. time. But Eminem hasn't like kind of pivoted or done a jump to a Trinidad yet or no. we've been, Barbados. We've, we've definitely looked. We've definitely been. We've been now in Trinidad looking at where we've been to some the Eastern Caribbean looking at projects. We're not there yet, but I think you know that's a matter of probably you always want to wait till your house is perfect. But mm -hmm. you know at some point we'll probably make that leap. Yeah. yeah. You think you'd need a joint venture partner in if it's a different island, or you think you can, you know, run with it yourself? I, you definitely need the nature of construction. You definitely want somebody on the ground who's looking out, who feels like you're looking out for them and will look out for you. Yeah. Right. Recently also, you know, probably a couple of months ago or maybe a year back, I saw your dad in the paper doing all these great things, you know, corporate philanthropy, giving back to Jamaica. Uh, you said earlier, it's, that's a very important, you know, value, you know, item that the company does. Mm. What's, what's that all about? And uh, is it something that happens annually? You know what, what what's happening there in terms of the company going forward well my parents both my mother and father from you know rural saint elizabeth rural westmont very humble backgrounds and we really have a strong position a strong inclination towards giving back mm -hmm. um, corporate social responsibility um, since almost 20 years now we've been had we've had uh, we've been having a growing element of charitable giving and um, give um, corporate social responsibility. We have a math competition that we run with schools in St. Elizabeth. We, I think we started with 35 students, uh, seven okay. schools, 35 students is now growing, uh, I think 60 plus students um, with bursaries and scholarships associated, associated mm -hmm. with that. We also I think when I was looking at the numbers, our scholarship budget in the last, since 2008 might be uh, 20 million in scholarships, tertiary scholarships. Cum you take. Cumulative or per year? Cumulative, cumulative in terms of, since, yeah, okay. I think 2018 we, we were at um, 12 million in, in scholarships. Oh. In, uh, I wish I remember the number of students. And, and have you been able to pull on, is it, is it an, an initiative of existing staff or have you, have you had to set up say a separate, whether it's a company or just a separate you know, head to kind of manage this because it can, it can, you know, it's, it, it, it becomes work. It is work. <laughs> it's, it's a complete <laughs> second job and we pressure our, we, we pressure mostly internal staff. We've had, a, okay. we had a coordinator for the math competition, Dr. Watson was very helpful. He did a lot. Okay. I think he's, he's, he's retiring now, but he had put out a lot in helping us get that off and manage, managing it for mm -hmm. us in St. And that's an annual, annual event. It was annual. Yeah. And what what month do you typically do it in? Oh, it was in the summer. Uh, summer. Okay. Yeah. Well, right. my part is in the summer after they did. It was like over a whole year. Many teachers were involved in terms of at the different schools. It was a and, very and every year there is one winner or it's a winner no, per school. Multiple. Uh, it was winners per grade cohort. Grade cohort. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, first, second, third place, and uh, it was very good. Um, we, we're promoting mathematics learning in schools. As you know, we find it kind of dear to our hearts. Right. Is it a percentage of net profits or is it? Just something that, you know, you know, evolves as, you know, like most family businesses, you feel like you can manage. Um, that's interesting. It just evolved over time. It's we definitely just keep giving. I think it's probably the opposite way around. We probably feel like we have to make more money so we can give more of it away. <laughs> OK, it's a good it's a good that's a good theory. Yeah, yeah a good policy. It's been very good. And we've been doing um, we have what they call the, the chance fund. Um, where we've been supporting a lot of communities in St. Elizabeth and other communities in in the, the locations where our projects are executed, helping kids, um, students with bursaries, educational assistance program, along with community assistant program okay. assistance, like through churches and so on. Yeah. Y your mom as a retired teacher, is she heavily involved in it, of course? Or? She was, she was, was. Uh, but she's kind of taking late laying back now, nowadays, but she was an uh, integral part of it. My father was very keen on it, um, still is. is okay. Is some, um, since 2018, we started a mentorship program for our scholarship awardees. 
So that's where we've been taking advantage of external help. We've been getting colleagues okay. and bringing them in to help mentor students, mentor our scholarship students. And that has been actually very helpful in getting them, keeping them on track, helping them grow as students and people. Yeah. And, and is there you know, criteria? I mean, besides, besides the math side, you know, for students to get this mentorship program, do they have to be excelling, you know, academically or? We, we tend to actually look for students who um, are performing well or show potential. But are performing below. Or and like maybe not necessarily performing at their potential, but are no, you know, we talk to the, stu the school, we look for community representatives and they will recommend students. And we give them, we challenge them. They have a minimum grade point average that they must meet. They must, um, you know, they have to meet these requirements and work for it just like anybody else out there would okay. want. Because, you know, there are other people, who, by giving this opportunity to one, you're taking it from another. And so we now have to do our part in growing them as people by giving them that challenge. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and where, where would you want to take it? It started already. It's mm -hmm. been doing very well. Where would you want to take this to? Same thing, the another thing, five, 10 years. Where, where, where would Richard want to stamp you know, the, the values of the company, you know, the mission, the vision, and you know, what you're doing for, for Jamaicans? In the not so far back of my mind, it's that we should definitely be um, inspiring, encouraging, bringing other private companies on board. This should really, over time, grow into you know, a multi-company you know, multi encouragement um, charitable event where we're bringing everybody on and it, it's uh, which we have actually which we do think we've been a good you know we spearheaded that in helping in also promoting other construction companies into that frame of mind getting us our association into the frame mm -hmm. of mind um so that's where i see it going um great in, and, and making it bigger yeah. yeah internally we've done a internship program which we also i think the number i have there is 36 engineers student engineers we've had in the last um, five years coming and training with us. So that's also a part of you know, giving back to, cause they don't have to, we don't, to, we don't hire all of them, but we train them and train make them, them hireable yep. or yeah, employable. Nope. Love it. Richard, we're looking forward to seeing your vision at M&M Jamaica. Great. Thanks for having me, Mark. No, you're welcome. Sure. That's it for another edition of Business Live Extra. We've been talking to Mr. Richard Mullins, Deputy Managing Director, M&M Jamaica Limited. Don't forget, you can watch us online at cvmtv.com forward slash business. Thanks for joining us.